Mary, looks like we're ready to get started. Okay, let's get go. started. <laughs> Thank you so much. Melissa, it's great to see you. I can't tell you how excited it is. I'd also like to thank um, Dr. Matthew Barr and uh, Dr. Elia Taylor-Scott for this great initiative from both from Glasgow and from Edinburgh and to Tony Scalina for, for the whole situation. I think it is wonderful in this time that we can be together and that we can start to help girls to build their confidence from such a young age because we all know from research that girls decide what they want to be from who's the nicest person they meet from the age of four upwards. So Melissa, I'd like you to talk about a little bit about yourself. We know each other so well over the last almost 10 years through many, many situations. So Melissa, please talk about not only yourself, but also about your new charity, which is a great initiative, which I think can work together with many schools and many other organizations, which we can talk about. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mary. And thank you for everyone for joining. We have known each other nearly a decade. I can't believe how much time has has gone by even in the time of a pandemic. But anyway, here we are, um, 2020, a decade later. Indeed, I am Melissa DiDonato. I am the first female CEO of a company called Sousa. For those of you who don't know Sousa, we enable innovation everywhere, from the largest data centers in the world to the smallest products you can even imagine. For any of you who use things like a mobile phone or flown an airplane, have ever had an MRI or a mammogram that's all being powered by the company that I run called Sousa. You may be surprised to know that Sousa itself powers about 80% of the Fortune 50, two thirds of the Fortune Global 100, 10 of the largest global telecommunications providers. We're actually one of the most um, mo more progressive technology businesses in the world, um, running, having been built and proud to be on open source for our entire history 28 years ago. Um, in addition to Sousa and running um, Sousa day to day and being a technologist for myself for the last, um, well, let's call it nearly you know, two and a half decades. Um, as Mary mentioned, I'm also the very, very proud founder of a new charity out of the UK, a confidence building foundation that was built for young girls. I, I don't wanna, maybe Mary, I can save a bit about Inner Wings for a bit, but um, yes, yes, say, and I'll ask you so to I, um, tell, tell us about Inner Wings because Inner Wings is very important because the OECD over the last few years has been doing some very interesting research with education for employers around young girls and, and, and their, their thoughts about moving forward, including in Canada and in Australia. So what you're doing adds so much to this. Yeah, so um, this is a topic that is quite dear to both of our hearts, isn't it, Mary? And, and that's about confidence in young girls. So um, let me talk about what's important. And, you know, I think we've got a lot of people on today that are probably parents or teachers, maybe even some, we have some students with us. And why is building confidence at a young age so important for girls? And that's the reason why Inner Rings was created. So um, I was a young girl once, I mean, not today, but now I'm the you mom. <laughs> I think, you know, Mary and I both were young girls once and Mary knows my daughter, Francesca. So um, the mom of a young girl, it, it, the topic hits home to me quite personally. Um, let me start, Mary, if I may, by giving a couple of key data points. And, and this, this was very meaningful for, for myself and for my husband when we decided that we wanted to go on the journey to address some of these data points. At seven years old, an equal number of girls and boys want to be president or prime minister. When they grow up by the time that they're 15, a significant gap emerges. A significant gap emerges. And then all of a sudden, a very, very small percentage of our girls aspire to grow up to be girls um, that could be president or prime minister. 61% of girls between 10 and 17 have low self-esteem. Um, so much so that in 2018, 22% of 14 year old girls were beginning to self-harm in the UK alone. No girl should have the thoughts of self-harm or without that confidence, not believe that they could be the president or prime minister. Girls need to feel empowered. We want them to feel that whoever they are, wherever they are in this world, they can accomplish goals no matter how big. When we think about the gender gap specifically in technology and on corporate boards and in the C-suite, which Mary and I know very well from the 30% club, we feel that if we empower more girls to have self-confidence and inner strength, 
we can make gender parity a true reality for our generation. So this is one of the many reasons why I started Inner Wings. It's, it's about the girls specifically and how they encounter that loss of confidence whilst growing up. And this can lead to many problems, not just mental health issues and self-harming, but eating disorders and overall degradation of their confidence from a very, very young age. And I felt that by showcasing successful and empowering female leaders to young girls, they can't be what they can't see. And introducing that, that leadership, that role modeling in a series of workshops, both in school, online and in communities, we can help them find themselves. We can help build on their strengths and we can help to ensure that we mitigate the confidence drops that so many of our girls have been faced with. And if I think, go ahead, please. I th I'd like to say that part of this is stems not just from home because a number of homes push their daughters hard and want their daughters to do well, but some of it, and this is not to be an insult to the teachers in the audience, it's to say that we need more teachers to push, not push girls, but to encourage girls, that, they, that every door is open to them. And Absolutely. we know that. And Absolutely. that is why part of teacher training, part of teachers retraining, is to know that every single door is open to girls. That's and that right. Not and build confidence in themselves, but to yeah. recognize their differences with one another. So it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more confidence we can build and the more that we can give them in their confidence toolbox and the more initiatives and the more world we can open to them around technology, the more skills they'll have, the more confidence they'll build. Inner Wings was created in May of this year. Um, only just recently, last couple of months, registered as a charity out of the UK. And that's exactly right. Our vision is to change the world with one confident girl and one empowered woman at a time. Our mission is to empower and inspire the next generation of girls and women by building confidence and bravery early in our young, in our young girls. And of course- Four, four onwards, that matters. That's, that's right. So we feel that- Primary school is vital. Early, that's, if we build it early, our pipeline will be directly affected. And that means that we'll inevitably, by building confidence and skills in young girls, our pipeline in technology will start to grow bigger and wider and faster. And that's where we can see a 50-50 representation in key roles and organizations by 2025. And that's why sending young girls to whether it's to nursery, to play school, unfortunately, we don't have sure start at the moment, but as we come out of COVID, young girls, even at two to three to four, being able to go to, to places to play, to meet, to talk, because that's what starts to build confidence and starts to have the inter, inter skills. And that's vital. So that as they come up into school and then the mentoring, talk about mentoring, Melissa. Yeah, at a young age, mentoring is vital. Mentoring that's each right. other, even playing together is a form of mentoring. That, that's right. And that's what Inner Wings is also about. So um, uh, as you well know my story, I was greatly influenced by a mentor at a very young age. In fact, when I was in uni getting my MBA, I had a mentor who was the dean of my business school. And, and Mary, you know this story. The dean of my business school said, you ought to get into this SAP thing. I think it's catching on. And <laughs> That was great advice. It was great advice. I, Not only did it catch on, it caught you on. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it did. And from that moment, I became um, one of the very few women in my cohort with hundreds of attendees to be one of the first female developers for R3 at the time. And it was hundreds and hundreds of, of folks in the cohort. And I was one of the very few women. And that began my tech journey off of the recommendation of a mentor. So Inner Wings is dedicated to empowering women and girls of all ages um, and one of our key delivery and the key delivery and success measurements are is mentoring, role modeling and programs, workshops and age appropriate children's books. So anyone who's listening who wants to learn more about mentoring, role modeling, workshops and inspiration, how to build confidence, you can go to our website, which is live. It's www.innerwings.org. Um, Mary, I don't know if you know this, but I've written four children's books. Right. I want you to come on and talk about your books. Yeah. Where people can get hold of them. The first two I've been looking at. And the books are vital because we know that without books, it doesn't matter about what, what young people see on the web and so on. Reading is absolutely vital. That must never, ever be forgotten. That's and everybody right. can learn if it's slower or if it's difficult. There's special courses for dyslexic children. As, as precious children, everybody, everybody needs to read. 
you That's know, right. even to do your, your applications on the web, you've got to read. So reading is vital. And for a very young age. That's right. So we've designed the books and I've written them for different age groups. And obviously each book pertains to different age groups, starting at about four. They're designed to motivate and inspire our young girls and to find their inner strength, build their self-confidence and accomplish their goals. Each, each book is targeted at a different group. Um, all the books are written non-for-profit. So all of the sales and proceeds will be reinvested to deliver activities through Inner Wings. So it's 100% dedicated to the charity. And each book, like you say, Mary, comes with a reading aid for parents. So what it does is it helps the parents to walk the children through the story about inspirational women, about dreaming big, and really thinking outside the box of who they can and want to be. The first book, this is quite a catchy title, is called <laughs> How Do Mermaids Poo? Um, a, a, an interesting question that Francesca asks me quite often. Um, the second book is entitled Kick Like a Girl. And the third one is The Magic Box. The last and where can people get these? Do they get them from you or can they get them in bookshops? Yep, so they'll be available in bookshops, Amazon, and all anywhere that you'd like to buy them. Um, the first one, How Do Mermaids Poo, will be available in November. Um, Kick Like a Girl in the Magic Box will be available in early 2021. And again, that'll be available either through our website or on Amazon or any local bookshop. Or, or in any easy place that people want to go to their bookshops, wherever. Amazon is probably the best place I think that mo most folks um, really and go. Who's your publisher for these? Who's the various publisher? publishers. We've got Great. three different publishers for all three books. I had a little bit of a fight, so I spread it out among the publishers. That's a so. good idea. That's absolutely great. Exactly. But it's really important that the books yep. are, are out there. And I think the other thing is you should talk a bit more about why mentoring is important, not just while they're so young, but also as teenagers. And as you leave school to go to higher education and a higher education and later on, that nobody is too old to be mentored or to be retrained. Absolutely. And that applies to everybody, to parents, to teachers, to young people. And in particular, as we come out of COVID, everything is going to be so different and we're going to be into a different world. So this applies to parents and to children. Absolutely. So let, let's talk about that topic. It's, 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 as it's very important earlier. because we've got a number of parents and teachers in the audience today. Yeah, mentoring has been critical to, to my success. And I think mentoring, Mary, as we both well know, is critical for men and women, regardless Absolutely. of the level that you're in and what role you're in, what industry you're in, it's, it's critical for taking advice. So let me talk a little bit. I talked about my own history. Let me talk a little bit about throughout my career. Throughout my career, Mary, you know, you've been a mentor to me for the last 10 years and oh, yes. so many others oh, yes. that have given back and helped make decision-making process a little bit easier. And mentors are meant to give guidance, perspective, and insight along with advice. Now, every role I've ever had, in fact, I know it's, it's <laughs> has been at the advice of a mentor. To this day, I am- Our mutual friends would tell you the same. Same thing, exactly right. And to this day, I'm a passionate supporter of mentoring. Um, personally mentor women and men, and I've started two mentoring programs here at SUSE. But you mentioned earlier, and we talked a little bit, and we kind of brushed over the 30% club. So for those of you who don't know what the mission of the 30% club is to achieve at least 30% representation of all women on all boards and C-suites globally. Now, when I look at the 30% target, to me, in my heart, and I think Mary's too, that's a minimum objective. It that's the minimum. We want to move it up 40 to 50 eventually. And also... And ethnicity as well. It's got to be every person's got to have an opportunity there. That's right. And with that, and if every person had an opportunity, 30% would be a floor, not a ceiling. And ultimately Absolutely. we're striving for 50-50. So mentoring has been key in our targets for the 30% club. And as my role as the tech chair, we've used mentoring as the basis to uncover four ways that we can get women into the boardroom in tech and fill our pipeline faster. So number one is pipeline, something we've already talked about. There are not yeah. enough girls in the pipeline. Tech. Listen, there are yes. not enough it's girls. Not right? it's, not a, it's not a plumbing thing, the pipeline. No. <laughs> we wish we could have thought of another word, but you know, it is the pipe, you know? We're not, we're, yeah, we're not dealing with plumbing today. We're dealing with the, the number of girls that we can choose to select to work in our businesses and that they can grow their careers in technology. Right. And they can come back. And, and in some companies, as we know, they allow people to be off for six years without being paid, of course, but have the opportunities to compete to be returners. And, and returners are always welcome. The greatest place to do that, right? So we know yes. we don't have enough girls interested in technology at a young age. And we don't have enough girls studying STEM subjects early enough. They're not exposed to the role models, the early education, and the mentors 
to show them how great this career in tech could be. So with the 30% Club, one of our big initiatives is around building visibility and brand knowledge of technology with young girls, like at this event. So for anyone that's a teacher or any students, parents, tech is a wonderful place to be. We need to show our girls what, you know, what they could be and without showing them, they don't know they could be. And this is an amazing career for myself as an example. And also how important cross mentoring is between company to company and male to female, female to male. That's right. And I've always told every girl, every woman that don't just look to other women only as your role models. At the 30% club, we never have all women in the room at one time oh, because yeah. we know yeah. the issues. We preach to ourselves. We always want to have representation at, by men, right? And so having mentors, male and female, in all of our girls' lives that will inevitably really feed the pipeline and it will address the second issue which we want to accomplish, which is the trap door. Mary, you talked about it earlier. Yes. Many women start their career in tech and fall out and never return. It That's could be right. because they have kids, they're, they're caring for aging parents. It could be a move from a different country or state or whatever it may be. But three times more women leave the tech industry than men and they don't come back. And we need to make sure that we open up the tech industry as a place that is a warm place to return to. So not just start your career at an early age and not just be interested, but it's a great place to return. Which then brings me, Mary, to the third program, which is the Returners Program. The Returners Program, which is vital. Now talk about that, please. That's yeah. really important. That's, that's specifically to address. Not because remember, we're going to be working much longer, forever. Yeah, well, at this rate, I think I think we've got about 40 or 50 years left. That's right, I yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, considering the last year has been a, almost nearly a write-off, but the returners program we've created with the 30% Club in Tech is about when women leave, okay? So we know there's the trap door and they don't come back. What can we specifically do to address not just the trap door from happening, but when they do go out, how do we get them back in again? We lose too many women to other industries outside of tech. And sometimes we, we lose them completely from the workforce. And in order to get parity in the boardroom, in the C-suite for executives, we need to make sure that our pool is rich with women in technology, all the way from a young age through the, through the trap door. They think it's difficult to return because they think it's gone beyond them. It's not. Can... That's right. That's right. That's so I, think, I think for me that when we look at mentoring and the impact it can have, impact um, is, is very meaningful in career decisions and, you know, which roles they take, do they ask for the promotion or not? And like I said, in fact, every single one of my job changes have been influenced by a mentor in my career. So Inner Wings and the 30% Club, it's kind of the bookends, Inner Wings for the younger girls, 30% for the older, for the women, obviously in their career to really ensure that we, we surround women with both role models and mentors in a way that's meaningful for their life decisions. Now in Inner Wings, what we're doing is matching younger girls with slightly older girls, not necessarily always women, because sometimes it's, it's hard to have the young girls relate to ca career women like us, for example, sometimes. So what we're trying to do now is create a mentoring scheme where let's say a year three girl could be matched with a year six girl. And that inspiration that that young girl sees in a slightly older girl is has been shown incremental value to the decisions they make and the value systems of which they live. So again, trying to instill that confidence and build the confidence from a very young age through mentoring, role modeling of girls and women of all ages. It's really important. And it's men and women working together to make this change. Absolutely. Because, and also the importance as when people go um, either to job share or, or, or earlier on when you go to be an intern or, or, or something like that, you need to work together to make this change and to encourage people. That's um, right. And, and that and that is and, you know, we've whilst the while the charity is really dedicated to building confidence in young girls we're certainly not going to eliminate the boys because we feel a big part of the world, obviously 50% of our population are boys. So we're cool. looking for ways to really integrate and build confidence for not just the girls, but the girls in the surroundings with boys. So it's really yes. an important initiative for the girls and boys to be mixed together and to really build confidence in both. But the ones obviously that inner wings and of course the 30% club is very focused on are the yeah. bookends are really building technology as a great place for young girls to consider at a young age as they build their confidence and their skills and for an incredible place for strong determined women to land as they develop their career. Absolutely and I think it's very important for young people and young girls in particular to be able to start on laptops, on iPads, 
on everything because that's where the future is. And for people to say it's not, this is the future. Every place you go to nowadays, you have to do it online and wherever you are in the world. And that's why I think, again, we need to encourage uh, schools and education departments and so on to, 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 to make this available to every child and every girl in particular. That's right. And, you know, we at Interwings, we've got one of our um, one of our mentoring programs and one of our confidence building workshops is just about that is is taking a skill that you love. Um, and then we don't even realize you have it. It's called finding your superpower. And a lot of girls have superpowers that they don't realize. And one of the workshops that we're doing when you find your superpower and you get your badge and you realize what your strengths are, are to talk about it. And there's a lot of confidence building that's being done in doing things like this, public speaking, right? And that means being able to go online and participate in this day and age where not always we can be physically in person. So being able to navigate through technology, be able to pitch what your superpower is. And for a lot of our girls, guess what? It's been coding. A lot That's of the right. girls say, my superpower is coding and I wanna tell the world about it. So one of the other workshops we're doing is about um, a tutorial for young girls taking their superpower and telling the world what they are, whether it's coding or developing an app or you know whether it's playing great football, whatever it is, we have no boundaries. Um, and being able to teach the world about those skills and having the confidence enough to talk about your successes. And also, for, I know one young girl who couldn't bring herself to, to speak well, and she wrote a play and then she was asked to put the play on. And this was at about eight. And this helped her to to move out and to build herself out with her colleagues and her classmates. This is why it's so important that, that every piece of this is available and we have to put pressure to make sure it's available both at home and at school. Absolutely right. And, and I think the partnership that we that we really need is with schools, right? And Absolutely. the best way to school get key, into yeah. and build confidence, as you said earlier, Mary, with the girls and with the students is to be firsthand inside of their schools and being the role model, right? And you can't be what you can't see. And unless the, the school right. get exposure, it's only going to be a one-to-one -one interaction, which is fantastic. But that synchronous activity that one gets and garners as part of an inner wings um, foundation activity inside of a school will help lead to not just confidence building, but a long-term impression of what the future could be for these girls and, you know, doing it amongst their peers. So usually, and you well know, you've got granddaughters as well. Yes. Um, oh, three. Three now. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Now it's three. Uh, we first met, there were zero. Now there's three. Um, <laughs> Boy. <laughs> and one, and of course the boy, we won't forget him. Um, yeah. but when, when in, in a school activity with the confidence yeah. building workshops, when they see their friends really striving to find the skills, whether it be coding skills, tech skills, or just general confidence building, speaking skills, standing in front of the room, even their football, whatever, football skills. That's football what it is. skills are really important. Sports skills. But if they don't want to do sports, then they could do plays, talking on WhatsApp to see their friend who they don't see because of the situation we are now, who they used to see at school every day. They can chat that way. Absolutely right. And doing it with their friends is really important. I think the last bit of, you know, of normal life we have right now is in schools, right? We, we can't hold a lot of in-person workshops. We're going to struggle to go into the communities to give back the workshops, the events, and the programs. Whereas at least in school, we have a way of reaching the students and a way of helping them build their confidence in a formalized structure, as well, of course, online, as we mentioned earlier. But that connection to the schools and you know the obligation that they carry for themselves to deliver you know a, a whole a complete education and to help the students think broader and bigger and to dream the big dreams. That's what we're all about helping the schools do. And, this, and we can help teachers as well. If we're helping pupils, we help parents or we help teachers. And remember many of the teachers are parents as well. And I think sometimes that's forgotten by parents. Yeah, my Francesca reminds me every day that her teacher has two daughters in her school. So <laughs> I get reminded, I get reminded all the time. So sometimes it's hard to forget, but it's, but it's a great way to make sure that we're exponentially creating value and confidence skills in teachers and girls and students and friends, daughters, cousins, all, all of them together. And also this can build networks for the long term to help each other as they grow up. And that again is important, you know. Right. Exactly. So now as we're coming to the end of our short discussion, which could have gone on forever, I think it's important that if teachers or parents are participating today or 
children as well who are part of this if they have any questions to contact you and I through the wings web page is that right yes so if anyone and we'll be back in touch with them that's right so for any of the teachers parents students anyone watching that wants to learn more about the programs um, and the services that we can offer to help your girls, your children build confidence of all ages, please go to our website. Uh, it's innerwings.org. So www.innerwings.org. You can reach out to us there. We're very happy to do either live uh, meetings with all the schools that are participating, or of course, nowadays it might have to be webinar very much like this. But oh, we're happy to do it with a couple of schools together or one school. Absolutely right. Next. Yep. Yeah, I think we'll bring the workshops and the events to the schools. Um, and we'll over the next X months, you know, that's right. After it in with 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 the program that Beatrice and and the team have, but Absolutely. over the next six months or so, we'd be very happy uh, to do workshops with schools in the UK. So that's that right. Cool. Absolutely, and I and I think Maria, as we begin to close with just a minute or two left, yes. thank you so much for being one of my mentors and role models. <laughs> yes, I love it. Lovely with you. Um, part of the reason why I started this charity in the first instance was because you're you're a very inspirational mentor, but also friend. Um, and you, you, one thing I've learned from you is the ability to balance a lot, right? We've had a lot of change and craziness. Oh, in yes, our we just have to keep decade. balancing it, taking it along. Mary always said, keep going. You can do more pressure makes diamonds. Let's do it. And the more we take on, the more we do. And Mary, you've been a great inspiration to me. So on behalf of myself, all the girls that we will have an impact. Oh, yes. and, I'm here with you, thank you. Thank you. and thank you. And thank Beatrice and, and, and Matthew and the team for all we've done together. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you to everyone. Thank Matthew, thanks. Bye-bye, Matthew. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye now. Thank you.